show match. Well, I mean, I thought they were going to want to play threes, but sure, I guess if they want to play a show match, I don't mind. Yeah, I got time. Okay, best of seven. Yeah, I got time for four games. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> of course, I'm still expecting Daniel to win this. I think Evo, unlike in the past where I would be predicting Daniel 3-0, Daniel 4-0, maybe 4-1, I think Evo's definitely capable of taking a couple games. I think, well, what would you guys think is the, in a best of seven, is the most likely outcome here? Um, Evo versus Daniel these days. I'll say, I think 4-2, with second most likely outcome being 4-1 uh, for Daniel. Um, I, th I think Evo's farm has looked pretty good recently. In fact, I might be leaning a bit more 4-1. This is harsh to say, but yeah, I, I don't think it's 4-1 because Evo can't perform up to the, his uh, maximum capabilities. I think it's just because Daniel's in such insane form right now. And uh, yeah, I don't know how Evo's going to how Evo's gonna stop him. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say 4-1. I think Daniel 4-1 is uh, my prediction. I was somewhere between 4-1 and 4-2, but Daniel's just looked so good recently, I'm going to say 4-1. What was the OSM Daniel scoreline? If you just uh, if you missed that one and you don't want to be spoiled, then you're uh, you're gonna have to watch this on video because we're gonna definitely mention it at some point. Yeah, the uh, spoiler alert score was 3-1. Games uh, two, three, and four being very competitive. Game one being extremely Daniel favored. Yeah, I would have probably predicted that uh, to be 3-0. Not gonna lie um, for Daniel. So I think OSM he performed just a little bit better than I thought he would. Been a while since I've seen him in ones, so I wasn't sure what to expect, but he's definitely been grinding. You can see that he's, at least defensively, at a very high level right now. His offense didn't look fully confident, didn't look completely there. Uh, but of course, it's hard to be fully confident when Daniel's sitting in net, staring at you. You, you always just feel like he's going to save whatever you do, hit towards him. Yeah, will Daniel switch to the Batmobile again? I, lo I really enjoyed seeing Daniel in the Batmobile. I think it was a good little mix-up for him. And I, don't think he, I don't think it was to blame for his loss, to be honest. What, what do you guys think? Do you guys think the Batmobile was to blame for Daniel's one loss to OSM? I think for me, looking at how close the Fennec game was in Game 4, I don't think so. I think it was kind of the same. Um, yeah, he, he probably got annoyed at the end of the game, though, because he had an open net from distance and he mishit the ball. That's, I think, the moment that triggered him, uh, or triggered the, not triggered him, triggered the the idea to switch back to the Fennec. Because usually, if there's one thing you can count on Daniel to do, it's booming the ball from distance. A little jump there from Daniel to avoid the incoming demo from Evo. Daniel's had such low-scoring games to, today. This is the third game in a row, if you look at the last two games that he played against OSM. I know the first game he's played against Evo, where it's so low scoring, but he's in control. He's got the advantage, 1-0, of course, and he's had boost the entire time. He's had pressure in the ball pretty much the entire time as well. It's like a very almost old-fashioned style of ones from Daniel. He's combining modern-day mechanics with the old-fashioned positioning in defense, where you're just ready to react at all times. That that style kind of fell out of uh, the meta because reacting to modern day mechanical plays is almost impossible. But Daniel is trusting himself against OSM and now against EVO to be able to react to what they're doing. Now, if, if EVO wants to counter that, he just has to peek in offense. He has to hit a flick top bins. He has to you know hit a double reset or something or an air dribble bump. Something has to be an unstoppable variation in order to beat Daniel when he's playing like this. He's got, a, he's got a response for everything that Evo's doing so far. Now he just dives in, and uh, th this is like kind of... He, he's reaping the rewards of all of his previous fake challenges. Look, Evo just doesn't see this coming. Daniel sneaks in behind the ball. Evo has no idea, because Daniel's faked so many challenges. He's shadowed so many times. Now when he does go, it's just an immediate success. Free goal. If he can keep Evo scoreless, this is going to crush Evo's confidence, I think. I talked earlier about how I don't think Evo's going to have issues in that regard, but if there's one way to get inside his head, it's not winning by a mile, it's stopping him from scoring an entire, an entire game. That's what Daniel's doing right here. He's trying to break Evo in game one. You know, this really makes OSM's performance against Daniel 
look all the more impressive at Evo. You know, kind of in that rank six to eight range in North America right now. Hard to say exactly where he is. Um, you know, I'd put uh, if you if you're if you're including um, import talent, maybe Evo's around about ten. You know, he definitely put Yan and Jack ahead of him. Definitely got Daniel Firstkiller, AJ ahead of him. Definitely got Chronic and um, Raze Bull ahead of him if Raze Bull's in farm. So that's what seven players that I've got ahead of him. And then yeah, Evo's kind of in that mix with Zapatos um, for 8-9, I would say. Actually, Lion Blaze as well. Yeah, he's, he's in the mix with those guys for 8-9-10. I'd probably like, I'd probably guess that Evo's number 10 um, at the moment. Something like that. CRR? Well, CRR, I don't actually know where to place. He said, uh, yeah, CRR is obviously very good. Oh, that's so unlucky for Evo. I think he just bumped Daniel into saving this. Yeah, CRR, he's had a lot of show match losses, so I don't know if he's top 10. I just, you know, CRR and Evo would be a good match, actually. Yeah, Evo's in that, let's just say that 10 range. Definitely CRR in that conversation as well. In the 10 range. Evo against players like Lost and CRR, they would be, I think, good games. He's not going to get a goal against Daniel here. Crushing defeat. Evo's out here to get a new car or a new preset or something. Daniel in impeccable form. Completely controlled the game. Did not look like he was in danger at any moment. Johnny thinks he's sneaky putting Chronic as import talent. I didn't mean... <laughs> I didn't even mean that, but okay. If you, if you want to un understand what I said as me sneaking Chronic in as import talent, sure. But I, I didn't... No. <laughs> no, I just said if you include import talent, and then I listed players who both were and are not import talent. So, uh, yeah, Chronic is just one of the top players. He's not import talent. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking my 4-1 prediction so far. I'm liking it. Um, but I think 4-2 is not out of the question, the way I saw that game going. All right, Evo's got, he's got a score right now to give me any hope of him. What's he got? Uh, it's not, not quite good enough. He need, needed to, I think, get something top shelf there to get, have a chance of getting past Daniel. Something has to go in the top shelf. Not necessarily top bins, just top shelf will do. Evo's inconsistent and predictable. Well, those two things are kind of contrary. Uh, I don't think you can be inconsistent and predictable. <laughs> so maybe, maybe there's a way. Unless you mean predictably inconsistent. But I mean, by default, players who are inconsistent are not predictable because how can you predict someone who's inconsistent? They could be peaking or they could be uh, just missing the ball. It's one of the difficulties that players that throughout. All ranks, pro players and even the lowest ranked players in the game struggle with is trying to read players who are worse than you. Well, I suppose that doesn't count for lowest rank because they are the bottom of the ranking. Um, but yeah, all the way down to the low ranks, it's very difficult to read players who are about 200 rating points below you um, because they're just about good enough that you think they're going to do something and then they don't, but you've read them doing something. So now, you, now they just have the ball for free. Uh, type 1 if that makes sense. That's a wicked shot by Dino. Oh my goodness. Pure power. Daniel rips the wall shot. Yeah, I'd say right around about 200 rank points beneath your normal rank. And listen, when I say normal rank, I don't mean the rank that you peaked at before you went back to your normal rank. I mean the rank that you hover at for 90% of the season. Or maybe 80-70% of the season. With the other 10-15% to being too high and the other 10-15% to being too low. And as if, as if to keep Evo in no goals, Daniel own goals to give Evo his first goal of the series. Bang. <laughs> Sorry, he says. Yeah, the first goal of the series for Evo is Daniel own going for no reason. Makes sense, I suppose. Yeah, if you're a Grand Champ 1 player, if you're usually 1,400, I think the hardest players for you to read will be Champ 2. 1,200. Low Champ 3. You'll probably still win. Uh, you should still win. But when you're in that lobby, you'll have no idea what's going on. You'll overthink everything. So every time somebody hits the, tries to hit the ball, you're thinking, are they going to hit that? I don't know. Whereas players who are used to playing at that rank, they know that they're more used to playing at that level so they can tell if the ball is actually being hit or sometimes they just don't care and they assume uh, that the player is going to miss a bit more confidently than you do. Yeah, that's why pros don't really enjoy ranks or one of the reasons why pros don't, don't enjoy ranks 2v2 um, as much as, say, the... Mix up twos format that we've been doing recently. At least all the pros that I've had on for mix up twos have said this. Um, it's because you don't run into those players who are just at the perfect level to outplay you by mistake. Pros 
are uh, you know generally hovering between 22 2500 and twos a lot of them go higher uh, some of them go lower but yeah anything between 22 and 2500 that's your like pro player numbers that you'd expect um, and then whenever you just get a 1900 or 2k rated player um, as a pro you're gonna have a hard time because uh, they're they're good enough to to do something you have to respect it but they might also do nothing by nothing obviously we're talking nothing by pro standards which is like a single reset then a miss instead of a double reset hold on Tangle's actually starting to make some mistakes I mean he's, he made one huge blunder this game with the own goal but there's been some other smaller mistakes as well where he's mishit some clears the control touches are getting away from him a little bit there's another run right there Still got that snap on the ground shot though. I think Evo should save this, but Daniel's all over him. He'll equalize with a minute and 46 to go. Daniel blundering three pawns. Yeah, he's like blundered. He made some he's blundered a couple of pawns this game, and then he's also hung his queen with the own goal. Um, so he's trying to just scrape his way into the late game here. He's scrapping with them in the mid game with all of his pieces, with no pawns, no no queen. He's just using the knights, playing some tricks on Evo. Um, Sorry if you don't play chess and you miss the reference, but you know, 1v1 and chess often have um, similarities between them, both being 1v1 games. It's a really nice bump by Evo. Well played. Realizes the ball's not going to be in reach anytime soon, so he takes that second uh, where he's waiting for the ball to drop to just turn around and Bump Daniel into his goal again. Evo trying to fake Daniel on the slight offset spawn and it works in Daniel's favor. This really shows how good Dark is at that kickoff. Evo tried it and first time Daniel read it. If you remember Daniel against Dark, Daniel didn't read Dark's uh, uh, slight offset spawn fake pretty much at all. He read it a couple times, but I think he fell for it about 10 times. So, incredible the level at Dark's at with, the, with that kickoff, how convincing he's able to make it look. I'm 1200 in chess. No, I'm, um, I think I'm like 1400 in uh, Blitz, 1500 in Rapid, 1400 in Bullet. Only online though. Over the board chess, I'm terrible. Like when I look at the board, when I play chess in real life and I look at the pieces, my pattern recognition is zero. Like, my brain is just like, yeah, I don't know what that means. Like, I look at the board and I'm like, my brain's like, yeah, I have no idea. Don't know what that is. But when I look at the uh, board online, uh, I've, since I've done that thousands of times, my brain will be like, oh yeah, this is, the, this is probably what you want to do. This is probably what you want to do. Like, I can spot ideas a lot more easily online. So I just haven't played over the board much. Daniel, looking to tie on zero seconds. Not going to get it though. Evo gets one game back. That's surprising. I didn't think it was going to come this early. Um, Evo immediately resetting himself after the loss in the previous game to beat Daniel. Well, being he's stuck in defense for most of this game, but he, he did well. Daniel's not really going all in a lot. I don't know how I feel about this. You know, I think Daniel right now, what he might be doing, I, I'm just, uh, you know, low-key speculating here. He might be just trying to not lose because Daniel does have quite a few losses recently. If we're looking at the, you know his results in the last six months, he's got losses to players he should be beating. Um, he's lost to Evo, Chronic, Dark, amongst others, uh, Naupo. You know, he, I don't know, I don't remember exactly when those matches happened, but they were somewhat recent. And in all those matches, Daniel should win. He is the ranked higher player, at least in my opinion, and in the opinion of pretty much everybody who watches ones a lot. So maybe in an attempt to be more consistent against the lower rated players. Um, it's crazy to call Evo a lower rated player, by the way, but that's just the case when he's up against Daniel. Might be trying to be a bit more careful with this strategy. Hone in more on getting little wins here and there, little wins on 50-50s, little wins with uh, efficiency, boost steals, forcing his opponents out of position, and then once they're completely incapable of keeping up, he scores into open nets, but this isn't something that Daniel's really known for. When he plays against the higher rated players, the, the other best players in the world, what you'll see Daniel doing a lot of the time is any time he gets control of the ball, he goes for a big play immediately. Whether it's a double reset off a sidewall, whether it's a uh, some kind of you know air ground to air dribble with a mind game thrown in, 
Daniel will be air dribbling his offense and going for really, really difficult save plays the majority of the time. Against Evo and OSM today, that's not been what he's trying to do. He's trying to get micro, adjust micro adjustments, micro wins, really try and break his opponents down. I don't hate that actually. I think I think he's gonna win while doing this. Uh, I think he I think he will win. Be very curious to hear if that's something he's thinking about or if he's just in general uh, trying to be a more consistent player, less all in on his offense. So this is somewhat all in here, but he should have a recovery off the back of it. The boost wasn't uh, used in too high of a number. He even still catches Daniel in the back corner though. Yeah, Daniel, for all of his evasive efforts here, didn't really change his uh, position all that much. He's jumped a couple times, but he's still landing in a straight line. Evo just plowed right through him. And he's back in front, 2-1. Well, look at this. Every Titan has an Achilles. Oh, there's no way we can call Evo Daniel's counter. I think he's, be he's beaten Daniel, I think, maybe twice. Possibly three times out of all the times they've played. But Daniel's beaten Evo, like, probably 15 times or something show matches and tournaments combined something silly they've played a ton because uh, you know Evo's been one of the you know A tier players in NA for a long time now Daniel's been S tier so they've matched up a lot just to say that uh, Evo is Daniel's Achilles I, I think that would be wrong I think playstyle wise it's not true at all if there is one style that I would say Daniel struggle with the most stylistically Oh, that's a great goal by Evo. Really well played. You know, he's he's taking, he's gambling here. He's like really going for his chances and he's making it work. That's a huge play. Woo! Second touch after the flick. It's really, really hard for Daniel to read. Rawas style? No, I don't think Daniel, I wouldn't say Rawas style stylistically is what Daniel has struggled with most. I think it's like players who just disrespect him um, and just send every single play at a million miles an hour. Daniel's used to being respected when he's in the lobby. He's used to uh, his opponent being a little bit scared and intimidated of him, even the very best players in the world. They think twice before going all in against Daniel because they know he's going to pull a save out of nowhere and then counterattack them. Um, but the, yeah, the three players who uh, just didn't seem to do that when they played Daniel were Durali, Naipo, and Dark, and they were, they were all able to beat him. They just showed Daniel zero respect. Uh, just went completely all in every single play, and I don't think Daniel's used to that, so... That's, if I said it, if I was to come up with a style uh, that someone is going to use, that would be it. It's very hard to do that style. Uh, you need to be ultra mechanical. You need to have a very, very high ceiling to be able to pull that off. I don't think, you know, uh, any player could just go into a lobby and be like, cool, I'm just going to play at, uh, you know, above supersonic speed. Yeah, it's not something everyone can do. Evo's got his number right now because, yeah, he, he's just, he's finding the perfect balance um, with his own range. He's he's not giving Daniel huge opportunities. Oh, what a save that is! I mean, Evo is he's playing an absolute blinder here. He's got the boost steal as well. Yeah, one of his goals was peak. One of his saves now absolute peak. And everything in between, he's just kind of he's in the he's in that zone where Daniel isn't going to be able to comfortably react to what he's doing. But at the same time, he's not all in. I'm very impressed with Evo's level right now. Daniel has been caught napping just a couple of times um, by Evo today. Evo doesn't need to really force the issue here, but he might still. I love that he didn't, in fact. That's so smart by Evo. He had a flip there, decided not to use it. Instead, just recovering with a little boost he had left. And now keeps the ball in the back corner. Nothing really Daniel can do there. Evo wasting so much time off the clock. But it looks like finally Daniel will get one back. And he can try and build some kind of comeback now with a strong kickoff. You just got here, what's the story of the match? My story of the match, um, and uh, I'm obviously trying to like figure out what Daniel's thinking, is that I think Daniel is playing to not lose, and uh, that's kind of getting him in trouble a little bit. He's, he's very, very standoff with his defense. But this worked in game one. In game one, Daniel kept Evo scoreless. Evo could not surprise Daniel at all. And uh, in fact, he was keeping Evo scoreless for a long time in game two as well, before eventually Evo uh, got his first goal from a Daniel own goal. But it looks like Evo's uh, starting to level up a little bit in offense. We've seen a ton of, uh, you know, great goals from Evo historically. He, he is capable, on his day, of getting a double reset past anyone. You know, getting a big shot or flick past anyone. He's a very explosive player. And I think in game one, Daniel just didn't 
didn't respect that. Every time Evo was coming at him, he thought, I don't care. I'm just going to sit on my goal line and let you pass the ball to me. But now in game three, when Daniel does that, Evo doesn't pass the ball to Daniel. He just sticks it top ends. So might be time for Daniel to go a bit more with his challenges um, instead of sitting back and letting Evo come at him. When it comes to offense, I kind of want to see Daniel go all in a bit more. Just trust his mechanical ability. Because if you can, you know, double reset against players like Yan, you can, you know, just consistently outplay uh, players like Patira in offense. Yeah, you've got to bank on yourself to do that against Evo as well. No disrespect, again, to Evo, but, you know, Daniel right now, he should be a level above. He should be able to just take the ball and put it in the goal, regardless of what Evo wants to do. That's the Daniel we've been used to seeing these days. Well, Daniel trying at the end there with a, with a pinch. It might actually bounce on target, nearly. That was the only win condition he had. Evo's taken two games in a row. Brilliant stuff from Evo. He's just snuck out a win in that second game and thoroughly deserved game three. I mean, every passing game, it's the, the pendulum swinging more and more to Evo. He's looked like the player who's got the right game plan. Daniel switching cars, perhaps, again. Are we going to see the Batmobile? No way. Imagine he whips out the Batmobile. It's more likely Octane. I'm going to be honest. It's more likely Octane. More likely full air roll Octane Daniel, but I'd love Batmobile here. Ah, it's Hispanic again. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, if, if I'm, uh, if I, like, like, let's imagine that this is a ones land and, uh, you know, I've, like, picked a, a ones lineup. Daniel's in my team. I will be telling him here, mechanics, mechanics, mechanics. Like, all I want to see is mechanics. Um, stop, you know, playing safe. You're better than Evo. Just go. Um, and that's what we've seen at the start of this game. Two mechanical plays and a goal by Daniel. I think he might be on the same wavelength here. <laughs> he might be on the same uh, idea. I'm disrespecting Evo. I absolutely am not. I'm not disrespecting Evo. Daniel is currently, he's a, he's a better 1v1 player than Evo. And I think he's respecting Evo a bit too much. Now, when I say respecting, I want to explain that just for anyone who might be misunderstanding what I'm saying. In Rocket League, this isn't just in 1v1. In Rocket League, it is a mistake to respect your opponent every time they have the ball. It is straight up a mistake if you just back off every time your opponent has the ball, assuming that they're going to play perfectly, you're making a mistake. You have to disrespect your opponent sometimes. You have to think to yourself, I don't think you've got that. I'm just going to challenge. You have to think to yourself, I don't think you're going to make a perfect shot here. I'm just going to go and take the ball off you. I don't think you've got control. I'm going to challenge early. These are thoughts you need to have as a Rock League player throughout all ranks in any game mode. And Daniel hasn't really been thinking that way at all in the series. He's been backing off almost every time. He's been letting Evo come at him. He's giving Evo the whole pitch and seeing what Evo's going to do. Yeah, now he goes early. That actually forces Evo to miss. Yeah, game game four here. I mean, this is, what I'm, this is what I meant. What Daniel's doing right now is what I meant when I say he's got to disrespect Evo a little bit more. I didn't mean he's got to, like, call Evo bad in the quick chat or something. Or, like, you know, start typing out obscenities. I just mean he, he's got to go more. He's got to challenge. He's got to tell himself, well, I don't think Evo's got the ball here under full control and I'm in a challenge to prove it. I don't think Evo's going to save this shot and that's why I'm going to stick it top bins to prove it. You know, that, that's what I really think um, Daniel should be doing as the currently higher rated ones player. And that is what he is doing. Uh, as if, you know, I'm not trying to... Um, I'm not just trying to be right here. I'm trying to educate you guys on what Daniel's thinking. Why not just say, be more aggressive? Because that's not what I mean. I don't mean be more aggressive. I mean, disrespect your opponent. Which, right now, a disrespectful challenge there from Daniel would have been to turn and go. Because Evo had the ball on top of his car. It is definitely disrespectful to just say, nah, I'm just challenging. I don't care. You've got the ball on top of your car. I do not care. I'm just going to flip into it. You know, th there's many players who do this. And uh, it works for them extremely consistently. Fanboying so hard right now. It's, it's crazy that when I like tell you guys how good Daniel is, everybody's like, wow, you're such a fanboy. And if I if I criticize him at all, all Daniel's fans are in my chat like, whoa, 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 why are you hating Daniel? I don't know. It's almost like I'm just trying to be accurate with what I'm saying. And sometimes I criticize him, sometimes I big him up, you know? <laughs> oh, what a bump by Evo. Genius. <laughs> On the spawn. Daniel trying to spawn near post here so he can block the shot. Little did he know that he's uh, going to get bumped as soon as he does. Yeah, no way I got called a Daniel fan. Boy, table started. I see that. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm used to it. I don't mind it because, like, I'll see this uh, the, on, on the same YouTube video. I'll see two comments, like, 
one on top of the other. One of them will say, wow, can you, uh, you know, not talk about how good Daniel is for 10 seconds, impossible challenge. And then the next comment will say, bro, why are you such a, a Daniel hater? It's like, people want to hear, people will hear what they want to hear. You know, if you guys want me to, want to hear me um, overhyping someone, you will. And if you want to hear me hating on someone, you probably will. Because you're just going to ignore the times I say something that is against what you believe. It's just the way it works online. I don't mind it. I'm still going to point it out so that I can help people be more self-aware. But yeah, it doesn't bother me. I'm used to it. Yeah, it's human nature. Confirmation bias, absolutely. I don't know. Have you guys seen the same thing as I've seen? It's, it's what I talked about at the end of game three, and it's what Daniel's done in this game. He's just gone for it more. He's just trusting himself to be better in offense. He's putting shots on net, and he's trusting his mechanics to be good enough um, for it to go in, regardless of what Evo does. He's you know made some more assertive plays in defense, trusted himself to just be, be the quicker of the two players, and uh, you know trusted that Evo won't react um, fast enough. I like, I, like, I like that a lot from Daniel as well. It's like not a bad effort though by Evo. It's one strategy you can try. If you if you read the fake kickoff late um, on the diagonal spawn, you can just hit the ball hard into the corner like Evo does here. It's not the counter, but if you spot it last second, you already have too much momentum to pull out of hitting the ball. Hitting it hard over your opponent's head is, is not a bad option. Because you do, as Evo did there, you get a free touch. Um, which, yeah, Evo decided to use it as a shot, which didn't work. Doesn't mean it's wrong, though. Just because something doesn't work doesn't mean it was wrong to do it. Just because something does work doesn't mean it was right to do it. It's still not a bad idea uh, by Evo. Too much respect is totally a thing when there's a skill gap. Yeah, I know people might think it's, it's disrespectful for me to say that Daniel's better than Evo, but I, I don't think it is. I think it's just a fact. You know, Daniel is better than Evo. Um, Evo would probably agree. But obviously right now when he's playing, he wouldn't, he's not telling himself that. He's not playing 1v1 against Daniel thinking, oh man, I hate how Daniel's better than me. Like obviously when you're playing uh, in Evo's uh, shoes right now, he's got to think he's the better player right now in this lobby. He's got to think, yeah, Daniel might be better than me usually, but right now I'm going to beat him. And, you know, confidence is a big part of his success. Um, and I think it contributes a lot to his improved results against Daniel more recently. Yeah, of course, outside of this game, I think Evo would, would agree. I think anyone would agree. When you look at Daniel's resume and you look at Evo's resume, Daniel's better. Uh, Daniel's like top three worldwide right now. So, yeah, of course he's better. Yeah, that's my advice to anyone. If you're losing to players you think you're better than, stop giving them as much respect as you currently are. Just go for the ball. Ignore what, ignore what the other team's doing. Just play the, play the miss, play the whiff, uh, play the do-nothing play. And by do nothing, I mean, you know, some, when somebody's dribbling the ball on top of their car and uh, you're, you're expecting them to do something, but they're actually doing nothing, they're just driving. Yeah, you've got to play as if they're doing nothing, just challenge. Just hit the ball. Just ignore the opponent. And you'll, you'll have a much better time against um, players who you, you know, think you should be beating. Actually, I had a little uh, example of this recently as we finish off game four. The other day I was playing uh, US West 3v3 with CJ and Yummy Cheese Man, as we do. Uh, we like to play US West 3s because it's the only server where we can all get somewhat playable ping. Uh, ping being somewhere between 140 and uh, 210, depending on the server. Um, but we ran into this team who could not hit the ball for the life of them. They couldn't hit the ball if they tried. They would miss water if they fell out of a boat. Like, they were the worst team I've ever seen in the entire history of the game. But because they were close to hitting the ball every time, we kept getting mind game by ghost touches. And they actually beat us. They beat us like 2-1 or something. It was embarrassing. We were like, that is the worst team I've ever seen. And they've just beaten us because we gave them too much respect. Every time that they were going for the ball, we assumed they would hit it. And then they would just end up faking it. And uh, their teammate would have an open net. Or something, something similar. So... We played them again. We played them a second game, and we just told ourselves, uh, right, let's just not show them any respect at all, and just go for the ball. Let's just ball chase and uh, act as if they're not even there, and we dominated them like 6-1. So I've got a very recent personal example of using this strategy to, to success um, against players who we, we knew were not at the same level. They were just missing way too much the first time we played them. I, I don't know why. It's US West, so they're probably all high or something. Um, yeah, you cannot, if, if players are missing, if players are faking a lot, whiffing a lot, you have to just go for the ball. 
It's the only winning strategy. Don't let misplays fake you. Yeah, you think I'm lying? Give it a go. You think that's disrespectful to say? Hey, try it yourself. Then you'll 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 see that I'm actually just um, for giving you a brilliant uh, piece of advice that can win you many games in the future. Okay, now the, I think it's up to Evo to level up here. Daniel's starting to produce the kind of plays that we're used to seeing from him. Oh my goodness. That's just impossible to save. Daniel with the low reset. Bottom corner shot and the dunk. Evo doesn't even do too badly here. He's trying to get behind the ball as he saves it, but Daniel's too strong. Yeah, it's up to Evo to level up. He's, uh, he's up against it now. Daniel's playing to win. Earlier in the series, he was playing to not lose. Now he's playing to win. And he is just trusting his mechanics to be better. And they are. Um, now, Evo's got to, I think, take it to that next gear where he just starts zooming around the pitch. There's no more time for perfect play. You know, slight imperfection at higher speed will probably do better against Daniel than perfection at lower speed. As it often does. Um with, you know, the lower rated players who have had success against Daniel, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, Evo's just got to go. He's just got to, he's got to take the fight to Daniel. If he doesn't, he's going to be stuck on no goals while Daniel dribbles the ball around. What's the counter when someone's disrespecting you? Uh, you mean when someone is just going for the ball and not uh, giving you any... Yeah, I, I mean, that is the meta, really. The meta, at least in high rating. Well, I'll say higher rating. The meta right now in Rocket League from like, at least on a, the season reset, because the, the new season rank reset means that any player um, who is 1500 or above kind of got put to the same ranking. And I played a lot in day one and day two of the season in the meta in those games, and still the meta right now in any like Grand Champ 2 plus games is to just ignore what the opponent is doing and go for the ball. It's very, very difficult to land mind games in the current twos meta. Um, because people just play the ball and they disrespect every mind game attempt. So if somebody's doing that to you, if they're not respecting your mind game, stop mind gaming. Stop faking. Stop, you know, going for uh, plays that rely on your opponent uh, missing their challenge. Stop going for plays that rely on your opponent not challenging. You need to just go. Um, you know, if, you, if your opponents are just ball chasing, um, you also kind of have to ball chase is the, is the counter. Itachi uh, from Carmen Corp actually got asked about their comeback win against Team Liquid Regional 2, the split in European RLCS. He got asked by the interviewer, I forget who it was, it, uh, might have been me, I can't even remember, probably wasn't. Um, the interviewer asked him, you know, Team Liquid looked like they were just playing faster than you guys, what happened, how did you turn the series around? And Itachi said, well, our coach said to us that they're just ball chasing, it's time for us to start ball chasing better. Um, so. Even pro teams, they, they do this. They, they use this strategy. Oh, was it Eversax? It might have been Eversax, the coach in the interview there. Yeah, you're right. I thought it was Itachi. Either way, same thing applies. When when you're being uh, ball chased, when the other team are just chasing the ball and just hitting it whichever way, they don't really care about direction. They're just chasing the ball, going to the ball as fast as they can, booming every touch, it completely ignoring you and disrespecting you. You need to just do that as well, but better. You either need to be faster or more precise with your touches or more efficient with your recoveries. In some aspects, you need to just be better. Um, because if nothing else, even if they are fast and even if they are, um, you know, a mechanical team, they're probably lacking something. Oh my days. Well, Dino's not lacking anything in this play. That's insane. Look at the angle he dribbles, air dribbles. He's going backwards here, turns it around with double reset and then dunks on Evo. Insane. Absolutely insane by Daniel. Yeah, it's kind of what Evo has to be thinking right now. You know, if Daniel's just decided to uh, start all inning every play, I need to be faster. I need to be more mechanical as well. Um, because trying to react to this is not going to work. This is what we were missing. Go next, says Evo. We will have to rewatch this from Daniel's POV as well. He actually flicked that last. Um, touch, that's insane. That last touch on the ball was was a double touch. Kind of a pre-flip flick off the reset. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of I'm, I'm surprised that we didn't see this from Daniel earlier. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I thought we would see this in game three, like after Evo won one game. I really expected Daniel to just switch to this D 
demon mode Daniel where he just goes for every big play possible and uh, doesn't care about what his opponent is doing. Very hard to see a way back for Evo in this kind of position. But if it is going to happen, he's got to full send it. No half measures, no, no half challenges, no hesitation. He needs to absolutely throw himself into every play and that's what he's doing here. Just no holding back, just boosts right into the play and uh, calls Daniel's bluff. Perfect start here from Evo. This is the only win condition he's got at this point. So Daniel's thrown down the gauntlet. Daniel's saying to him, hey, I'm playing to win. What about you, though? Evo's got to say, same. He's got to step up to the play here. We might be uh, in for a very explosive game six here. Daniel keeps on doing what he's doing in the past two games. Daniel vs. Evo always starts feeling like a LeBron vs. Random High Schooler. You guys are saying that I'm disrespecting Evo? What on earth is that comment? Are you serious? <laughs> I just said Daniel was better than him. I didn't say it was like LeBron against a high schooler. That's like, a, that's, that's, that's disrespectful. <laughs> I mean, they're disrespecting your opponent and disrespecting. Oh my goodness. Let's see how he does. He's, he's already got a good start here in this game, but Daniel will kick off goal for uh, his first goal of the game. How did he get this one? Of course, he pushed it through, as usual. <laughs> I feel like every, this is all Daniel does in the kickoffs these days. Nobody knows what to do against him. Worked well against OSM. It's working well against Evo. Yeah, you can't mirror him. If, you're, if you watched the OSM series earlier on, I already explained... Uh, what Daniel's doing here. I'm not going to do it again. Um, I've already, already explained what uh, OSM could do to counter it. Oh! My bad, my bad. I said no half measures and Evo just tried to go for a top bins open net finish because why not? <laughs> and he misses the open net. Thank you by the way to Bruno226 for 16 month prime. Hyper, sh hyper shish. For the brand new prime. Probably said that wrong. God shift RL with the brand new prime. Resley RL with the 4 month prime and 41 month or 41 month tier 1 from Dave RL appreciate you guys yeah Daniel played OSM he was crushing him in the kickoffs in game 1 and OSM like tried to figure out a way to stop that from happening uh, he kind of did I won't go deep into the theory but yeah he started delaying his approach and faking more um, yeah that, that's, that's that series happened earlier today if you want to go watch it hear about how that was broken down. Daniel's just got that other gear he can go to, doesn't he? He's just got that attacking level um, to his game that is so hard to stop. There's certain players who can do this. They just uh, decide that they're they're just going to start scoring and there's nothing their opponent's going to do. Daniel's one of them. He was still Surviving. This is great boost management from Evo here. Daniel might underestimate just how much Evo's got, in fact. He needed to be careful there. Not wanting to talk about kickoff. I'm not going to repeat myself. I already explained. I'm not going to, like, give you guys... So, hey, this is what happened to the OSM Daniel series. I'm like, it just happened, like, today. <laughs> oh, dear. Evo's been it. Not sure if he was planning to knock that into the bar or if he was trying to control it, but he's... He's definitely been it, that's for sure. He jumped in too much momentum. Like he was trying to knock it into the bar. Got ahead of the ball. again with his most common kickoff win sidewall air dribble pre-jump save from Evo though look at this landing as well he's got a momentary open net takes his time with it Daniel denied boost for a while goes back corner cover is decent Evo's follow up shot not going to really materialize into much Daniel grabbed that boost on his path back to goal it wasn't there for Evo to steal lean back reset from Evo that's the top right shot. That's, you know, kind of uh, half a goal attempt and half trying to force Daniel out of position. It looks like the latter might occur. Indeed it will. Evo's tied the game. Yeah, Evo, you know, shooting the ball straight at Daniel there just makes it a bit more awkward for Daniel to clear. Daniel with a rare mess up there as he tries to take the ball to safety. It's 
another off the wall play from Daniel after a strong kick off. This is going to be a ground double with a reset thrown in. I mean, it's a reset or just a blocking touch, whatever you want to call it. Evo faked a ceiling challenge, kind of landed awkwardly there. He wanted to just drive back onto the wall, uh, but his car briefly fell. And that slowed him down. And he panicked and fell out of the position. Evo now with a chance to make a kickoff play happen for him. Big run up. Fakes the ground shot. Cuts in field. Still looking for that far post. And that does lead into the boost seal. Evo. Looking to bait a challenge. He got what he wanted there, but didn't really do much when Daniel did challenge. Heavy shot from Evo. Daniel out of position. Well played by Evo. Daniel. Actually making a bit of a mistake when he flipped that second time. He probably wanted to scare Evo away from the ball, but Evo just ignored him and went for it anyway. Understanding that he was actually going to get there faster regardless of Daniel's intentions to go or not. Again, Evo just goes. Yeah, I'm loving what I'm seeing from Evo in this game. Has to be confident if he's going to have any chance here. Even though it's Daniel he's up against and he's played a great game. One reset from Daniel. Evo avoids the dunk, grabs the boost. Oh, he decides to wait with that. Next touch, again, showing patience. Evo sends it down the line. Probably wanted a back wall demo there, but Daniel's in a really safe position. Evo bails. Flick from Daniel. Not able to set up the boost seal or the demo threat. Evo looking to predict an early challenge from Daniel there. Daniel faked. And Daniel's boost running a bit low. Evo controls the ball beautifully. That is such a technical touch to make and he does it with perfection this flick lacks power though no demo in the exit boost steel is there though evo wants to immediately attack but he's lost control now he's pressuring a no boost daniel has an opening evo's got to be so careful daniel looking for the trip he might have had a demo there if he waited half a second before going 12 boost evo has to hit the ground and he does overtime game six evo's done so well in this game just to get this far can he go one better and he gets into a seventh game he might you know that's a great start the shot's free for him and it's in Daniel bumped out of position on zero boost and Evo takes it oh Daniel just saw the bump coming a bit too late he went to turn away from it and he couldn't get there another struggle for Daniel my, my main criticism of Daniel in this series is that he waited one game too long before deciding to pop off and just send it every play he did that in game three. Game th uh, No, he did that in game four, sorry. In game three, he kind of stuck to the same strategy that lost game two. Um, hoping that it was more execution than strategy that was wrong. Only in game four did he switch to his more aggressive, disrespectful self. And uh, that got him two games. But now Evo matching him accepts the challenge. And into game seven we go. See, obviously Daniel's got bigger fish to fry in the ones world right now again I don't I'm not trying to you know um, say that Evo is not a challenge for him let me finish my sentence before you all start to jump to conclusions Daniel has been a fiend against the world's best ones players as of late but the reason this match is so important for him is as I've said many times recently Evo's the level of opponent Daniel has had a very unclean resume against and this is, uh, I think, a much bigger game for Daniel than some people might realize. Some people might be just be thinking this is just a Daniel win, 10 times out of 10, and uh, anything else is unacceptable. But actually, as of late, he has struggled against players in Evo's rank range. Even Evo himself has a win on Daniel recently. One win, I believe. Could be two. So the reason I bring that up is that this is, I think, Daniel's trying to prove to himself that he doesn't actually struggle against players he should be beating. Um, but what an opportunity for Evo once again to now fight back from behind against Daniel. It's not just like he got the lead early and uh, stayed in front the entire time. No, he actually had to come back from two games to three. And uh, it's not been an easy one either. Daniel played that last game very well. He started off game seven at a very high level also. I'm a hater. I'm not a hater. I'm just trying to tell you the story of these two players. Daniel has struggled against players that, are, that you should be beating a couple times, a few times maybe several times would be a more accurate description so he's trying to get back into the swing of things where he just wins these kind of matchups like players like Rawas do players like Zen haven't lost any matches they're supposed to win 
Daniel wants to be that consistent as well. Should be beating very vague. I don't, I don't think that's vague at all. I think it makes perfect sense. In 1v1, it's a lot more clear who should win. Um, in 3v3, the best team in the world could lose against the 20th best team um, in group stage RLCS, and nobody would bat an eyelid. You know, example examples of that happening would be Carmine Corp dropping group stage best of fives to teams like Solary. No disrespect to Solary, but Carmine Corp should be beating them, and they didn't. Uh, they didn't beat them the last time they played. Solary reverse swept Carmine Corp. So in 1v1, it's more clear who should win because any small discrepancy in skill turns into a big difference on the pitch. Whereas a small discrepancy in skill in Pro 3v3 doesn't really look like too different. It's like an overtime win or a 1-0. Um, so that's why in ones you can say this player should beat this player and you're more you're probably going to be right more often. My ones predictions are a lot more accurate than my threes predictions for that reason. Oh my goodness, what a pop off by Evo. That's nuts to get this much power on a shot like this. Well played, just got enough on it. I would have loved to see him just turn the car full sideways to get the pop earlier, but he makes it work. Comeback commences in game seven. But I don't know, when I said this, when I did my player rankings, my top 25 player rankings, and I put Rawas, or my top 20 uh, 1v1 player rankings, and I put Rawas number one, Daniel number two, a lot of you guys were like, lies, Daniel's number one. But then my reason was that actually Daniel's lost way too many times to players he should be beating. Um, and now I'm trying to explain that concept to you. It's not hate, it's just he should win. <laughs> he, should, he should win. Who's Evo? Evo is, uh, if, you, hey, if you like what you're seeing from Evo today, you can look forward to seeing him at the next major. He's playing for Dignitas. I actually think I forgot to congratulate him for this during this video, but I've said it on the podcast, the shotcast with uh, CJ, CJ and Rizzo. Um, weekly podcast we do, I have said, Spoken about that at length over there. Yeah, Evo, Andy, and Dries. Qualifying as the number five seed from North America. Really exciting to see a new NA team in the mix. Really exciting to see Evo in the his first big test in 3v3. One of the newest players to the NA1 scene. No way. Oh, what a slot by Evo. Wow, how did he sneak that one through? Daniel had the boost advantage here. Evo wave dashes, and he gets just a little bit more pace on that than Daniel was expecting. Daniel thought he could just react to that. Evo kicked it forward um, just quick enough that Daniel couldn't respond. Evo going to try and fight for the back corner boost here. It proves to be a tricky position. Half clear from Evo. Daniel cuts immediately towards the goal. And he does get it past Evo. I think Daniel's starting to see these earlier challenges coming. He's just making sure to get the ball past Evo rather than shoots on target with every play. Oh, Evo's beamed it. Oh, I think he could have saved this. He just didn't turn enough on the ground before jumping. Great placement on the shot from Daniel. Evo obviously didn't read that. He turned the other way. But if he just turned a little bit more to the left on the ground before jumping, he would have saved this. Still had some turning to do midair, which is obviously a lot harder to pull off. And Daniel. Still. Proving to be very difficult to get the ball past. Early jump to deny Evo any ideas air dribble bumping him or getting a flip reset on the ball lovely defense from Evo fakes the boost grab and runs across his goal to intercept Daniel's shot Daniel's just pre-jumping everything right now not giving Evo any time to get his flip resets going and it's these early plays in defense from Daniel that have really stifled Evo's offense in game 7 and he's been able to ride that early lead all the way till the final minute I think he's, uh, he's done really well here at EVO. I'm so impressed with his recent improvements he's made. I mean, they're not even recent improvements anymore, but the overall improvements he's made to his mental game over the past year. You know, when I first started casting EVO show matches, it was almost a guarantee that he would fall apart in Game 5. Uh, whereas now, he's lost Game 7 here unless he pulls out a miracle, but he's not fallen apart by any stretch of the imagination. He's, he's playing really well all the way till the end, forcing Daniel to play a great game to beat him, uh, which is wonderful to see from a guy who's still one of the newer players to the, to the top of the scene. I mean, Daniel, obviously a young opponent, but he's been at that level so, for so many years now, uh, since he was 13. He's, uh, he's well over three years at the top of the one scene. 
Yeah, I'm loving this uh, newer edition of Evo, who you can just you can, you can perform regardless of what stage of a seri series he's in, regardless of what matchup he's in. His, his consistency has massively improved over the years. But GG's, Daniel pulls out the win. Um, an important win for him because, like I said before, he should be winning these kinds of series. He's lost a lot of these series in the past six months that he should be winning today. He wins two series in a row that he should be winning. You guys, you can interpret that whatever way you want. Some people apparently think that's rude of me to say, but I think it's just the truth. Um, and it's, it is a talking point for Daniel 1v1, in my opinion. Because the only thing that he's missing in his resume is consistent domination against players a tier or two below him. And I'd say Evo's at definitely a tier below Daniel right now, in my opinion. Um, but he's super solid. Very, very impressive player. Great to see him. Uh, I love, love casting his games. Love to watch him play.